When you play back your audio inside of Kaden Live, over in the audio mixer, you can see how loud your volume is. And when it hits the red area, that's called peaking or audio clipping. And that's not a good thing. It can actually damage your eardrums or even your laptop speakers. In this video, you'll learn how to prevent sound clipping using a limiter inside Kaden Live. We'll start with the hard limiter, which despite the name is quite easy to use. Over in Kaden Live, I'll go to the effects panel, I'll go to audio effects, and then I'll search for limiter and select the hard limiter. I'll add it to the master. This one has the least controls, but gets the job done. The hard limiter has four sliders. The first one is used to set the limit in dB or decibels. For those who don't know, zero is the peak and you count down from there. So it goes from zero to negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on. I'll set the dB limit to negative six and now nothing should go above that value as seen in the audio mixer. You can apply the limiter either to a clip a track or master where it will apply to everything on the timeline. Next we have this wet slider which only lets you lower the volume here. But that's only for this slider since it doesn't include the dry value. We'll get into that in a moment. After that we have the residue level slider which is where you can set the equivalent of the attack time. Basically, you can use this to soften the limiter's effect as the hard limiter is very harsh as the name might indicate. I'll set the residue level to 0.1 for this example. Finally, we have the wet dry slider, which controls how pronounced the effect is. Wet and dry refer to the balance between the original dry signal and the process wet signal. Now, if you pay attention to the audio mixer, you'll notice that our sound barely goes over negative six. The barely is because of the residue, which allows a bit of leeway. That's it for the hard limiter. Moving on, now for the limiter, just limiter. The regular limiter inside of volume and dynamics includes additional controls. At the top, we have two gain sliders, input gain and output gain. Increasing the gain raises the volume and decreasing it lowers the volume. Input gain controls the signal which is coming in, so the original sound. Output gain controls the signal going out, so what we get after the limiter has been applied. I'll demonstrate in a moment. First, let's take a look at the limit slider, which unfortunately doesn't work using dB values or decibels. However, the function is similar. You decrease the value to set a limit for the volume. The lower you go, the lower the threshold or the more sensitive it gets. I'll set the limit to 0.5. Now going back to the input and output gain, no matter how much I increase the input, so the original incoming signal, the limit or limiter will kick in and prevent the sound from peaking. As for the output gain, even if I were to set the limit to 0.1, increasing the output gain too much would still make the audio peak since it's applied after the limit. Moving on to the attack and release, attack determines how quickly the limiter starts to reduce the level of the audio signal once it exceeds the threshold. A shorter attack time means the limiter reacts more quickly to sudden increases in volume. Release governs how quickly the limiter stops reducing the level of the audio signal once it falls below the threshold. A shorter release time means the limiter recovers quickly after reducing the signal. Next we have this ASC checkbox. In the context of audio limiter, ASC typically stands for automatic slowdown control. This feature adjusts the release time of the limiter automatically based on the input signal. This is mostly for quality control to ensure a smooth and natural response to sudden changes in audio levels. I'm not an audio expert, so I'll leave it to that. Finally, we have the normalize to zero dB, which literally does what the name says, normalizes the audio to zero dB. And that's really it for the simple limiter. Moving on to the fast lockhead limiter, which I think just might be the best option. We have an input gain, which is set in dB or decibels, a limit, which is also set in dB or decibels, a release time set in seconds with the top value being two seconds, and finally the wet dry slider. With this, we can increase or decrease the original signal using the gain. We can set our limit in decibels so it's easier to relate or understand. We can control the release time, but not the attack time, unfortunately. I find that the fast locket limiter does provide the best results. I haven't gotten any distortion from it. And there you have it. I didn't cover the tap scaling limiter. I'll leave that to you. Be mindful of where you apply your audio effects and the order in which you place them in. You can learn more about working with audio inside Kaden Live by clicking on the left 
or click on the right to learn how to work with colors using Kaden Live. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, doubt, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you. This is Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan, and I'll see you next time.